In this video, we're taking you guys around the 2022 Florida RV Super Show and giving you some of our top tips and tricks um, if you're planning on buying at the show this year. As both RV insiders and customers ourselves, we're gonna be here to help you maximize your time at the show and save the most money possible. Let's go. All right, tip number one. Um, Something that I find really important that you can start doing before you get to the show is kind of get that game plan together and stick to it. Now, this is especially important if you are like ready to buy. Your goal at the Tampa show or any show is to buy. Um, you So you'll want to kind of list out the RVs that you're looking at. Hopefully, if you're at that state, you have you have it narrowed down to some. And then, or at least that category, you know, Class C, Class A, Fifth Wheel, whatever it is, narrow it down. Try to kind of map it out a little bit. And it's so important to stick to that. There is a lot of you know cool looking motorhomes and trailers and just a bunch of cool stuff here but if your goal is to buy save the fun for next year or a future year when you can just walk around and have fun and look at all the cool stuff if your goal is to buy this is the time this is the year to stay focused on what you're looking at and um just stick to that because if not it'll be way too confusing there's thousands of units here and uh it can be overwhelming okay the next tip is to plan on to come on multiple days of the show um so this really applies whether you're you know exactly what unit you want or you're still maybe like narrowing down um so you know it's better to to have some buffer room there so you know even if you're coming you know like oh i definitely want this reflection grand design reflection i know exactly what i want um it's still good to have that buffer time so that you know say day one you come and you start you start talking numbers you start getting quotes and stuff like that that gives you time where you don't have to make a decision day of you can you know have have your hotel go back sleep on it really think over the decision and then maybe come back the next day um so yeah and of course if you're looking at multiple units you definitely are going to want multiple days just to just to have that time to really like f first figure out what unit you want and then give you the time to like actually get prices and make that like purchase decision and as will mentioned in his is um last tip if you're coming to the show and you're you're really looking to buy um you don't want to spend time looking at all the different cool stuff of the show but if you do plan multiple days in the beginning of, of you know your first couple days you can you know work on actually buying a unit and then if you have like another day that's when you can walk around and see some of the cool stuff here because there is a lot of cool stuff to see but you just want to make sure if you're coming to buy that you give yourself enough time for that Okay, so the next tip is to understand the perks of that dealership and their like free offerings, but don't buy based off of that. So you guys know we've worked at um, a few different dealerships and each one has its own, you know, little free perk. At um, RV Retailer, who we're partnered with now, it's um, RV Complete, which I actually do feel like is a great, great program and provides a lot of value. Now, with that said, if, all. Uh, you know, a dealership offers something like that and another dealership offers nothing. If it's a little bit more, uh, there is value in that and it's great. Um, but at the same time, if it's neck and neck or, um, you know, you're not getting a, a huge perk, um, you know, don't buy based off of that. You know, it's a lot of like kind of hype around stuff like that really just to get your mind off of the sales price. So make sure to um, kind of read between the lines, make sure that you're still buying based off of good numbers. Again, it doesn't have to be the best if there's some good perks, but make sure you're buying off of good numbers, buying the unit that you want and not getting wrapped up on, in all the other stuff. Yeah, I just wanted to add to like what, to what Will's saying, it's like, if, if a dealership is giving you a way better like out the door price, yeah. like that's the priority. But right. yeah, if the prices are really comparable and dealership X is like giving you like something like RV complete, then right. yeah, maybe it's worth it. Like right. that, it's it's kind of like that last decision maker. It is, yep, you know? that can help kind of put you over the edge to, to one or the other dealership. Um, but overall, stay focused on those numbers. Yep. All right, so our next tip is is really just to be nice to your salesperson. It sounds really simple, um, but you know we kind of have a. I feel like we kind of have a culture of like, you know, salespeople are out to get you. You know, beat up the salesperson on price and stuff like that. And you know, Will and I have both been RV salespeople before, so we know that side. And you know, I think that 99% of salespeople are there to to really help you they want to help you find the best unit they want to get you an awesome deal because honestly they want to sell it here's the thing if if uh, if any salesman sells that unit the, the dealership's still getting paid it's in the salesperson's best interest for them to sell it because of course they want to get the commission so it's like they want to they want to get you the best price they want to um get you a good setup so that you want to buy it so the biggest thing is just be respectful to your salespeople. um 
a lot of times they're not even the ones making the decision on like I mean what price they can get you they're going back to their manager and the the more of like a friendly relationship you have with them the nicer you are to them the more and more they're gonna really advocate to their manager to try to get you a good deal um, so yeah don't don't go in with the mindset of oh it's a slimy salesperson they're just trying to get me over you know they're they're here they're trying to make a living guys 99% of the salespeople I've met are really good people and they truly care about the customer so I think if you go in with that mindset when you work with someone you'll find that your outcome is a, is a lot better um, just just being a decent person so the next tip is to buy when you're ready but don't rush into it if you're not ready so it's kind of one of those things where it's like hey an RV show might be like the little thing to get you over the edge and don't be afraid to take that step if you're at an RV show and you know uh, what you want and you're you're ready for that but the biggest mistake that I see people make a lot of times is if they do buy the wrong unit you know, because they're like, we're at the RV show, we gotta get it here. Trust me, the savings at the RV show is not good enough to end up not liking it and taking a huge depreciation hit and having to trade it in in six months because you don't like it. So it's so important to make sure that if it's the unit that you're ready for and you are ready to purchase, jump on it. It's a good deal here at the show. If not, Again, don't take that hit um, until you are 100% sure that that's the unit that you want and you're in a financial position to buy that RV. The next point is probably my favorite. So if you put yourself in the salesman's shoes, right? The salesmen have thousands of people walking by and their job is to help the customers who are there to buy and answer questions, of course. Um, but when you actually are sitting down with them, um, again, it's their kind of their goal to get somebody to purchase that unit. So my, the biggest tip that I can say when negotiating is to let the RV salesman know you're serious. There are people, and it's okay, there are people who come and they just kind of want a price and they want to think about it. Maybe they'll come back next year when they're actually ready. Um, and they'll get you a price and that's fine and everything. But if you're ready to buy, you need to make sure that that's understood because they will make whatever phone calls they have to. They'll call the sales managers, the general managers, the directors, the owners, if they have to, to get you that best price possible um, when you're there. So what I recommend doing is when you are sitting down to negotiate is say, hey, if you can get me to this price, here's my credit card you can run it for five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars a thousand dollars whatever you're comfortable with and whatever they need to hold the unit tell them they can run it there is nothing that says hey i am a serious buyer get me the best price than giving them a deposit giving them money basically to start off with so again incredibly important if you are ready to buy give the salesperson your credit card with your offer say if they can do this run my credit card for five thousand dollars if not just bring me my card back now will i have a question because yes. earlier we talked about how it's good to come multiple days maybe yes. come the first day get the quote go back at home and think about it would you say that it's a good strategy to maybe first day you if you say you say you know what you want you come the first day you get a quote from your salesperson you say hey we want to go back and think about it when you go back to the hotel that night you um, you really think about like what price you want to be at, what right. you want to negotiate at. Then you go back to your salesperson the next day and yes. kind of do that credit card trick. Would you say that's like kind of a good strategy? For sure, yeah. If you're not, you know, do it as soon as you're ready. Again, prices are going up. That unit could sell. True. Um, you know, so as soon as you're ready, give them the credit card, make your offer. If you need time to think about it, don't don't you, do that until yeah, yeah. Don't do that trick until you are ready to go because they could come back with a serious offer and you need to be ready to uh, you know. To to jump on that yeah but you know if you want to get a price sleep on it come back the next morning totally fine do that the next morning just use that credit card trick for whenever that time is where it's like hey we're ready let's do this yeah like when when you have it in your head like hey i know this is the price i want to yes. be at and there's this is not the unit there's that not I want. talking about it anymore that's that's when you pull that card exactly yep cool so the next tip guys is to be realistic with your expectations and your offer on the price um so you there's kind of two methods of thought when it comes to negotiating price. Um, you know, some people will tell you go in with a really low ball offer. And I do think there's like times when like that might work. Will and I kind of have the mindset as salespeople to go in with a little bit more of a realistic offer. So obviously you want to offer something that's gonna give, obviously try to get the best price possible. Um, you, wanna, you wanna go in with the offer that gives you some negotiating room. Um, but at the same time, if you go in with a super low ball offer, a lot of times as a salesperson, you almost don't take that person seriously because if I say, okay, say 
as a salesperson, I think, okay, I can get them um, with a sale price of 60,000. And they're like offering me like, they're, they're offering me like 45,000. In my head, I'm like, I'm not going, I'm not, I know I'm not gonna be able to even get close to what they want. And so they're probably gonna end up walking. Whereas if I know I can probably get you at 60 and maybe you're offering me 55, well, like I know that there's like some room there where we can try to like meet in the middle and compromise. Um, the problem is, in the, you know, in today's market with just how crazy, you know, RV sales prices are um, and just like the cost of everything, it's really hard for us to say um, a good like per percentage off MSRP. It really varies per unit, you know, like some units, maybe you can get 15% off of MSRP and that's a great deal. Some maybe more, some maybe less. It's really hard to give you a blanket percentage. So what I'm gonna say is for this year and for possibly the next couple of years, um, we as Matt's Review Reviews are here to help you guys um, figure out like what what is a good offer to go in with. So if you guys are coming to this show, what I want you to do is come by the Matt's Review Reviews tent, tell us what, what you're looking to buy. And then what we're gonna do is for that particular unit, we can give you guys a better idea of what's a good offer to start out at. Um, so that you know that like, you know, you're, you're being realistic enough that your deal is gonna be taken seriously, but you're also giving yourself enough room for negotiation. So in previous years, it used to be like, hey, you know, here, here's a good percentage that's kind of blanket across the industry. Um, it's the RV industry has changed a lot with COVID and everything. Um, so definitely if you're coming, like I said, to the show this year, make sure you stop by and see us and we can give you more of a precise number based on the unit you're looking at. Okay, so the next tip has been kind of a hot topic lately and it's gonna be to understand hidden fees. So hidden fees are kind of one of those things I feel like they're a little bit newer in the RV industry. They've always been there, but they're all over the place now. So it's definitely been a hot topic lately. Here's the thing, hidden fees are okay to start off with. And personally, I hate it when it's like super high hidden fees, right? I think it's kind of crappy to show a low sales price and you're just making it up by charging, you know, two, three, four thousand, five thousand dollars in freight and prep and dock and all this. It's like, you know, the price is the price. There should be a little bit of freight, a little bit of prep because those are real costs. Here's the deal though, being an educated consumer, it's not necessarily a bad thing because if dealership A is selling you the unit for 50,000 with no hidden fees and dealership B is selling it for 40,000 with 5,000 in hidden fees. At the end of the day, you're paying 45,000 for that unit and 50,000 for this one. So the one with the hidden fees is still the better deal. You're saving $5,000. It's very, very important to understand that. Um, but overall, most dealerships will have some fees. And if they don't, if they say they have no hidden fees, it's just because they're tacking it on to a higher sales price, which in my opinion is a little bit more honest and I do like that. But also what is pretty honest still is when it's a very good sales price and you know, a thousand dollars freight, a couple hundred bucks, you know, 500 to a thousand in prep. Um, those are real numbers. That's what it really costs a dealership. And, um, but again, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter as much. Just make sure that um, your bottom line is the best possible basically. All right, so the next tip is one that we, we always like to tell people. It really applies to any show and that's to shop all dealerships when you're at a show. Um, so if you're not familiar with how RV shows usually work, um, there's, when you go into the show, there's the sections of the show are separated by dealerships. And what happens is each dealership has the rights to represent certain brands at the show. So like maybe RV1 is representing J. Co. and Thor, and another dealership is representing Forest River. So obviously you're coming to shop probably a specific brands, but you'll see that they're sectioned off with different dealerships. Where people get confused is that they think that, um, okay, like you come to the show and um, you know, I'm shopping in the RV1 display and I don't see Grand Design there. So if I wanna buy a Grand Design, I have to buy it from the dealership that represents Grand Design here. And that's not the case actually. Um, so most dealerships, you know, are selling more than what they have at the show and then they can actually like compete on price with that. So say you guys are coming to the show and you're shopping Grand Design Reflections and you know that's the unit that you wanna get pricing on. Don't be afraid to get pricing from the dealership representing them, but then also go to other dealerships and have them have them compete on price, guys. You can possibly get a better deal on that with the dealership that doesn't have it at the show um, because you know they don't have as many people there like interested like trying to buy that unit at the show. Um, so like if you think about it, if you know whoever's repre representing Grand Design, there's a lot of people looking at that reflection 
the coming to the show looking at that reflection and so they have a lot of interested buyers whereas the dealership does not representing that they don't have as many interested buyers so they're likely going to want to like latch on to your potential um sale a little bit more so th i guess the whole the whole bottom line is guys like don't think that you can only get a price from who's representing it at the show so if someone's shopping say from texas we have like five to ten dealerships within texas alone so we can probably get you a better deal um at a dealership that's close to where you live so just make sure if you're coming to the show um you know go to different dealerships have them compete on price um and a lot of times if you have a quoted offer in hand and then you go to another dealership um they have something to base their offer on and try to like beat their price all right for the last tip we came over to the mats rv reviews tent and i think it looks awesome let us know what you guys think make sure to come see us as you can see down that way we're uh, by jayco right across from um fleetwood and right over here is a believe force river um so you can't miss it it's big bright and orange but the last tip is how to deal with price increases and locking in your price so the prices are going up it's just insane i can't believe how much they go up just like week by week day by day month by month it's every time i turn around there's another price increase on this brand or that brand so again if you're ready to buy your best deal is going to be at the show especially if it's an in-stock unit because that unit is already landed on the lot the price is set and that price is from a unit that was ordered who knows how long ago six months ago three months ago and um your new unit is going to take six months or three months to come in now if you were to order it now you're going to get the best price on an order at the show as well but each week that goes by each month that goes by is potential for another price increase so again even if it's not like a huge percentage off and it's not the best deal that you've ever seen it might still be in your best interest unfortunately to take that deal because if you wait three months or six months or you know even a couple months down the road um it will likely be more expensive unfortunately it's just the way that the market is right now along those same lines incredibly important if you are lo uh, looking to order if you end up having to order make sure whatever price you're getting is locked in because I cannot tell you how many it's it's almost it's probably once a week now that I get a call from somebody who didn't purchase through us um, and they're they're calling me saying hey I purchased through XYZ dealership because they were a little bit cheaper than your price or because they were cheaper than the next dealership by a couple thousand dollars but now they're getting a phone call saying literally almost weekly I get a call about twenty thousand dollars more of a price increase you know that's a lot more I would rather be secured at my price today and spend three two or three thousand dollars more than get a call in a few mm -hmm. months saying it's twenty thousand dollars more or more and I've it's heard. and it's so sad too because like a, a lot of these people they're ordering it they're waiting months and yeah. months and then they finally know it's coming in they're so excited and then they're yeah. hit with that like whammy and then it's you know then then you then you have that terrible decision of like do I give up on this unit I've been waiting months for or or do I pay a lot more than what I was planning on right because then even if you find a dealership who's willing to lock in your price and give you a better deal than that price it's like now you're waiting another six months and and chances are there's gonna be another price increase now the good news with that is that um, through all of our dealer partners, if you come work with us, we are locking in every single price. You don't even have to worry about it. Um, if you're not working with us, make sure to get that in writing if they say that they're gonna lock in the price. Cause if you don't have that in writing, you know, there's a lot going on at the show and they'll say, you know, we never said that or whatever. Make sure it's in writing. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just make sure to get that price locked in. And if not, it better be a really, really, yeah. really good deal where in a few months when the unit actually comes in, it's okay if it's $20,000 right, more. Right, right. All right, guys, that wraps up this video. We really hope that it was helpful for you. If you're planning to buy at the T Tampa RV show this year or honestly any show in the future, these tips are really applicable, um, you know, across any show. Um, so as we've mentioned a couple times, we will be here at the show. Um, so if you if you want to come by and see us, we're at the Matt's RV Reviews tent all week. And if you're not looking to purchase, we still want to meet you. We do a lot around buyers just because it's a big decision. We want to make sure yeah. everybody understands we're there to support. But if you're not looking to buy, um, no, we 100% still want to meet you and take pictures with you and everything so still stop by please yeah and one bonus tip guys i almost forgot um if you're coming to the show just to help like maximize your time as well there is an app um for oh, yeah. for the show that has an interactive map where you can go on and you can actually choose like the display you're trying to go to um because even like it's it's a little bit easier finding like the big rv brands but say you want to go to like lippert like right. smaller vendors that are in buildings it's hard to find but if you go on the um app 
you can actually select, hey, I want to go to Lippert, and it'll like circle it on the map and show you where to go. There's other features on there to help you just like get around here and yeah. you know know where everything is. So that obviously that's a big tip too, just to like really like maximize your time. Um, sure. But other than that, you know, we hope you guys enjoyed this video. We hope it was helpful. We can't wait to meet a lot of you at the the show this year. We're gonna be filming some other stuff here, guys. We don't know exactly what yet, but probably featuring some of like just like cool units that are at the show, some new stuff that's come out um, since the Hershey show. So um, because we haven't filmed it yet, and this video is coming out tomorrow, guys. <laughs> so if there's something that you really want to see, something new that's right. hit the market, leave a comment down below because we're still like pretty open to um, what we're recording and everything. So if there's something you guys really want to see, we'll definitely try to make it happen. Of course, yep. All right, we'll see you guys later. Thanks so much. See Bye. Ya.